Hey, what's going on everyone? JSTCG here coming at you with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile. Today we're going to be going over my branded tier limits list. It's kind of crazy because I thought Sprite was going to be like the best deck and honestly, I like all the different tier decks that are running around right now. So this is my take on branded tier limits and I also am testing Danger as well. I think that version is really fun. I was really planning on playing Sprite more this format, but after playing both decks and different variants of each deck, I think Tier Limits is the way to go. It's an explosive deck, it's really fun, and yeah, so let's just jump into it. Alright, so I'm playing three of all of the tiers. I kind of think that's the way to go. You want to see tier names. So yeah, three of everything. I know some people like to play uh, like one, maybe two Rhino Heart, but... Yeah, basically, I mean, it's a tier deck. I like seeing all of the names. However, when it does come to the side deck, um, there's a lot of cards I side in, which we'll talk about once we get there. I usually do cut um, one or two Rhino Hearts because I want to see some of the side deck cards that I include. But I think just going into game one, you just want to see a tier name or multiple tier names. And then I just play a small, like, branded Despia package. That's two Alibur and the one Fallen of Albaz, and then for the rest of the monsters, it's just one Shadal Beast and three copies of King of the Swamp. All right, now we're moving on to the bulk of the deck, which is the spell cards. There's a lot of power spells in here, but first, of course, we're playing three copies of the Tier Limits Field Spell. This card is just insane. This is really powerful. This is one of my favorite cards of the deck. For the branded stuff, we have, of course, three branded Fusion and three branded opening i think by now we just know branded fusion is really good plus a lot of decks aren't playing really that many hand traps so it's not like they're just ashing branded fusion all the time it still happens don't get me wrong some people play ash and hand traps but um yeah branded fusion's awesome branded opening's really good i mean even if you mill it and it's in your graveyard just chilling it can protect your fusion monsters then of course we have three copies of dark ruler no more really really good card right now this format i mean just turn off all of your opponent's monsters on the field three super polymerization really good card i mean it's good against sprite it's good against the mirror after that i just played two regular polys and then one instant fusion one called by the grave and then lastly one foolish burial to round off the spells trap cards i'm just playing one i'm playing the one meta noise it's basically just a book of moon so why not? But yeah, that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards. I wanted to keep it at as close to 40 as I could, even though there were a few other cards I wanted to try out. Um, I thought maybe having Forbidden Droplets in here would be good. Maybe two copies if I can't fit three in, but that brings it up to 42, and I just didn't really feel like it was necessary. But um, yeah, so I just tried to slim it down, keep it to 40. All of these cards serve a purpose, and it's been working out so let's move on to the extra deck and then the side deck all right so starting off with the extra deck with the tier fusions i play two copies of kit and the one kaleido heart very standard i mean they're recyclable you can get them back from your graveyard into your extra deck um some people in some of the other builds of tiers play only one kit i i like having the second copy kaleido heart is kind of more i don't know you don't go into him as much as kit but he's a good boss monster i mean he's got 3000 attack he's 3500 if the field spells out so he's a beefy boy but yeah two kit one kaleido then for the branded stuff we have mirror jade lubellion and the alba Lenitus. Uh, this card's good because it searches instant fusion which is crazy and then one guardian chimera as well then after that two copies of like one of the best fusions drago stapelia great against sprite makes it a level one and then they can't special summon out anything so really good and you can go into two quite often so i like having the second copy in other builds like the extra deck is a little bit more tight so uh, some people play one but in this build you're just all basically zoned in focusing on fusion summoning so yeah i like to play two then we have the one kaliga mud dragon winda garua 
and then we have uh, the Millennium Eyes. All of these are insane. I mean, Mud Dragon, Garua, really good. Super Poly targets. These are all just really powerful fusions. Garua is quickly becoming one of my new favorite cards right now. And then the last monster is one Time Thief Redoer because you can get your tier limit uh, level fours out, or maybe you have an Alibur that's sitting out on the field and you have to normal summon Rhino Heart and kind of, you know, go from there. You can overlay, go into a Time Thief Redoer. I may cut this for a, um, an Abyss Dweller, or I might try to find room for an Abyss Dweller as well as having the Time Thief Redoer. In the danger tier deck that I'm building and testing out, I do have room for both spoiler for when that deck profile comes out um but yeah this is basically what i'm running so far abyss dweller is just great for the mirror match and um i feel like i should include it but i don't know what i would cut exactly then lastly we have the side deck still kind of a work in progress but i think it's coming along pretty good it can shut down a lot of different decks right now so only one monster and that is pancratops pancratops is really good against sprite um it's kind of nice that this card's seeing a little bit more play because i always thought this is a really solid side deck card this is kind of one of those cards that becomes popular for a format and then goes away for a little bit and then comes back and i feel like tier players at least are using pink a little bit more now then we have some back row hate with triple twin twisters and the feather duster and now here's the fun part of the deck with Triple copies of Eradicator Epidemic Virus, Deck Devi, Three Trap Trick. Well, the last one here is a red reboot because we don't like back row decks. We don't like trap decks. However, with that being said, game two, game three, you kind of turn into your own little mini trap deck with these nine cards Deck Devi, Rex, Sprite, and Eradicator Epidemic Virus. I mean, most of the time I'm calling spell cards because a lot of decks are just throwing in, you know, a bunch of power spells right now, or they're not playing any traps, and it's just a bunch of monsters and spells. But every once in a while you might call trap as well. But uh, yeah, being able to basically get rid of all the spell cards with Eradicator Epidemic and then like all of the little sprite cards with Deck Debbie's really good. Um, and trap trick just gets you access to those quicker but yeah i'll side in like all nine of these and just hope for the best when i draw and it's really good when you open up any of these really so there you guys have it that is my branded tier limits deck profile stay tuned i do have a couple more deck profile videos ready to go for you and then the content's going to change a little bit more i know it's been kind of stagnant kind of stale lately I've just had a lot going on and I've been working on acquiring, you know, the new Yu-Gi-Oh cards for Sprite and Tears. So I want to do deck profiles on those, of course. But now uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be diving into actually showing gameplay footage of the decks, um, doing test hands, things like that. So stay tuned for those. I hope you're excited for those because I'm excited. I'm going to work on just becoming a overall better player of the game. With work and life and other things, it's difficult to get to locals and put the practice in, but I'm gonna be playing more online. And I'm also going to hopefully be streaming on YouTube semi-regularly. I thought it'd be cool to, you know, showcase cards in real life, maybe do some real life test hands on stream, maybe do some EDL Pro games or Dueling Book games and get some games in with any viewers that might be watching. I think that could be fun. And I want to do some product openings as well. I got some Megatins coming in in a few weeks and when those are in, I thought it'd be cool to live stream that on YouTube. So I do have a lot of stuff planned that I think would be fun and entertaining. So hopefully you guys stick around for that. If you do subscribe and stay updated with what's coming out, that would be great. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more. It really helps me out. It's a great free way to support the channel. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for checking out this video today. If you liked it, let me know if you have any suggestions comment down below as well. I'm always open to build better decks and learn from you guys. Some of you have have had great advice for decks that I've built in the past and it ends up being even better than before. So thanks to your help. 
I get better at the game and have a better deck. What more could you ask for, right? Thanks again for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out and have a good one. Oh,